Hello, my name is Carla, and today I'm here to show you this remarkable tree, the cork oak tree. The beautiful cork oaks that we can see here at the woods of Calus Park are different from most other cork oaks in Portugal because their bark has never been harvested. This is what we call virgin cork. As you can see, it's rough and very irregular, so not suitable for high-end products like the natural cork stoppers used in the best quality wine bottles. Another peculiarity that makes this woodland special is the high density of cork oak trees present, because they usually occur in a traditional agroforestry system we call montado. This agroforestry system is characterized for having low density trees combined with agriculture or with pastoral activities. Montados are the iconic landscape of Alentejo, the south region of the country. And there is so much to say about them, I'm sure I'll make another video on this subject alone. So back to this majestic tree, a cork oak the tree that has gifted mankind with this extraordinary versatile material, cork. Yes, cork has unique and incomparable qualities that no human engineer has succeeded in imitating or bettering. We are, however, quite resourceful at finding new applications for cork. So much so, it's becoming a ubiquitous presence in our daily lives. As if that wasn't enough, cork has even left the planet. Uh, playing a critical role in the thermal protection system in NASA's rockets, and so becoming a vital component in space mission safety. Cork is the bark of this tree, and what makes cork oak unique is that it's the only tree whose bark can regenerate after being totally stripped from its trunk. Removing the bark of a tree from any other species would surely kill it. So how do these oaks survive the extraction of their bark? Well, the process of annual addition of cork rings is the result of the activity of a set of cells called the phylogen. The renewability of cork is due to this tissue remaining active throughout the life of the cork oak. This is different from other trees where the phylogen is discontinuous and has a short annual duration. So that is this tree's secret to survive and damage to having its cork being stripped from its trunk. After losing its bark, a new layer of cork will soon grow back. Besides covering the trunk and its branches, cork also covers exposed roots protecting the tree throughout its life, especially from fires. Although, if done correctly, stripping the cork of the tree doesn't seem to affect its vitality, it does seem, however, to have a negative impact on the tree's longevity. The oldest known specimens are over 500 years old, and their cork has never been harvested. On the other hand, the lifespan of a cork oak tree whose cork is per periodically removed is usually around 150 years and rarely goes beyond 200 years. Cork oaks are medium-sized evergreen trees, usually no more than 20 meters in height. The scientific name of the cork oak tree is Quercus suber. Quercus means oak in Latin, and suber was the name given both to this tree and to cork by the Romans, and that Linnaeus decided to keep when he classified this species. The cork oak has, to my knowledge, eight different common names just in Portugal, depending on the region of the country. So, common names can be tricky. Therefore, to avoid doubts and confusion, always add the scientific name. It belongs to the Fagacea family. That includes all oak species, as well as other beloved trees like the beech and the sweet chestnut. The cork oaks have to endure very hot and dry summers. Their leaves play a critical role in their survival strategy. By being small, the leaf surface is also small, thus minimizing water loss through evaporation, especially in scorching weather. The upper side of the leaves have a glossy appearance due to their thick, waxy cuticles, which renders them with a tough and waterproof texture and again, preventing water losses by evapotranspiration. 
The stomata, crucial for photosynthesis and respiration, are strategically placed on the lower side of the leaves to reduce direct sun exposure. In addition, the abaxial side sports small whitish hairs that reflect sunlight and help to keep the temperature at the leaf surface low. Come summer, when green leaves are available for animals to graze on are scarce, these leaves protect themselves by being rich in unpleasantly tasting substances like tannins. Another deterring factor against herbivores are the leaf serrated margins with small spines. The corkog has flowers in the form of cactins or amids, which we can see here, these slim, drooping, cylindrical flower clusters designed to be pollinated by the wind. Its fruits are the well-known and beloved acorns. But because the cork oak usually flowers several times during the year, usually in March, April or May, but also a bit in summer or even autumn after the first rains, we usually get three surges of acorns a year. The first comes around September, October and has the biggest acorns. The second around October, November and the last one around December to February has the smallest acorns, which are the favorites of the wood pigeons. However, the acorn annual production in this species is very irregular. One year with an abundant yield called a mast year is usually followed by two to five years of low production. This is a strategy to prevent animals to rely too much on acorns as their main food resource. Fagacea is one of the most ecologically important woody plant families in the northern hemisphere, as oaks form the backbone of temperate forests in Europe, Asia and North America, and are one of the most significant sources of wildlife fodder. But actually, acorns were the staple food of many early human communities everywhere from North America to Japan. So, it's no coincidence that phagasia comes from the Greek word phagus, which means to eat or devour, a clear reference to the nutritious fruits most trees in this family have to offer. So we can find oaks from North America to Japan, but where can you find cork oaks in the world? Well, not in so many places. Its natural distribution area is quite restricted since it's limited to the Western Mediterranean region. It grows spontaneously in Portugal and Spain, but also in Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia. It also grows in the south of France and on the west coast of Italy, as well as in the islands of Sicily, Corsica and Sardinia. The total area currently occupied by cork oak forests is around 2.1 million hectares, and more than 60% of the area is located in the Iberian Peninsula. Portugal can be proud for having the biggest area occupied by this tree, with around 720,000 hectares or 34% of its world area. So it's no surprise Portugal is the world biggest producer of cork, but it's also the leader in the cork transformation industry, a very important industry based on this species bark. Did you know that all the cork is removed by hand? and that this activity is the most well-paid agricultural work in the world? That is because harvesting cork requires high expertise and considerable care, both to avoid harming the trees and to enhance tree productivity and cork quality. What is known as production cork, suitable for natural wine stoppers, can only be harvested when the tree is around 40 years old and every nine years after. So the average tree will be harvested around 17 times in its lifetime. In addition to the cork oak's main product, the cork itself, other parts of the tree are used. In fact, nothing is wasted in the cork oak. The leaves are used as natural fertilizer and as fodder. Winter pruning provides firewood, charcoal and virgin cork suitable for agglomerated cork products. The natural acids found in its wood are used in beauty products and chemical products. Its acorns are used to propagate the species and as fodder for certain species of animal, the most famous being the black pig. And more importantly, since acorns are a rich and nutritious food for humans' consumption, 
Their employment has seen a comeback recently, especially in the form of flour used for baking breads and sweets, but also in liquors, in coffee, uh, for the production of cooking oil, or even in the manufacturing of skincare products. The cork industry is truthfully unique in the world for four reasons. First, it is the only forestry industry that does not cut trees. Second, it promotes a high biodiverse ecosystem. In fact, Portugal is one of Europe's countries with the richest biodiversity, a lot thanks to our montados. Third, it is a zero waste percent industry, seeing that every little tiny bit of cork is used. And I do mean every little tiny bit, since even cork dust is compacted and turned into biomass. And this biomass is later um, used to provide up to 60% of the energy needs in some cork transformation factories. And lastly, Cork itself is a 100% natural material that is renewed every nine years, that is reusable and can be recyclable endless times. If only all other industries were like this one, right? Well, a girl can dream. I'm sure by now you will agree that this is an incredible, incredible tree. And we did recognize it for its immense value a long, long time ago. It has been legally protected since the Middle Ages, more precisely since 1209, when cutting cork down was prohibited. This protected status was reinforced with new laws in 2001 and again in 2004. And almost 10 years ago, the cork oak became Portugal's national tree. It is undoubtedly one of our natural treasures and the obvious choice for such role. Well, consider this just a small, small introduction to this amazing species. There are so many stories to tell. I'll have for sure to make other videos about the cork oak from its ecology and adaptations to its eco ecological relevance or how the cork is produced and the industry around it. Therefore, if you would like to learn more about this and other trees, consider subscribing to this channel. Please let me know if you have enjoyed this video by giving your thumbs up and do share with me uh, what else you would like to learn about this oak or about your favorite tree in the comments. I will leave you for now. Go out, 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 go out as much as you can <laughs> and befriend a tree or lots of them. They will never disappoint you. Beijinhos! I will always mention every species scientific name for the sake of clarity. It's a YouTube channel after all, and you could be watching me from Japan. Konnichiwa. <laughs> and, or anywhere else. No. <laughs> <laughs> Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Privet. Uh, merhaba, merhaba, então, merhaba, privet, uh, bonjour, <laughs> bonjour, olá, <laughs> um, e mais, o que que eu sei dizer? Uh, em chinês é ni hao, ni hao, uh, que língua é que eu sei falar? Olá. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> um, who knows? <laughs>